Hello, BBN. Welcome in to another edition of our UK Football Virtual Fan Day. You know, you guys would have preferred to be at Kroger Field this season to interact with these players, get autographs, meet uh, with Coach Stoops, etc. But obviously, in these times, that can't happen. So, uh, this is the next best thing, which is the Virtual Fan Day presented by Clay Ingles. And for the next 15, 20 minutes, we're going to have some special guests. We have a full house tonight. Three running backs, two quarterbacks. Uh, Terry Wilson and Joey Gatewood from the QB room. A.J. Rose, Cavassier Smoke, Chris Rodriguez from the running back room. You can send in questions via Facebook or via Twitter, the UK football accounts. And uh, we'll jump right in with a question that came in early from Emma, uh, who will be our first question of the night. And she wants to know what you guys have been doing most during the quarantine. So we'll go around the horn on this one. We'll start with uh, Terry Wilson. Uh, this quarantine, I really just, been, you know, just laying around, uh, studying the playbook, uh, video games, you know, just trying to lay low. All right. We'll go to next, Joey Gatewood. So this quarantine, uh, mainly I've just been, since my first year, I've been diving in the playbook, you know, just trying to learn the concepts, terminology, and, you know, just, you know, I'm, I'm a gamer too, I'm a gamer too, you know, I just, I just chill, you know, you know I've just been trying to, you know, just get a hold of everything and how everything's done here in a different program. Next, we'll go to C-Rod, Chris Rodriguez. Uh, yeah, basically during quarantine, like uh, Terry was saying, kind of laying low. Uh, I'm a gamer as well. And, uh, yeah, working out, that's really it. What's the game of choice? Call of Duty. Of course. Call of Duty, all right. Good game. Could have guessed that one. <laughs> Cavassier, smoke. You muted. Smoke, you muted, bro. <laughs> Oh, I got muted. I'm sorry, but um, during this quarantine, I just really just been working out, um, staying in the house, chilling with my dog, and really playing the game. That's yeah, all we'll, I can do right now. We'll uh, we'll get to meet the dog later. Uh, we, <laughs> that's a little tease for later on in the show. Uh, yes. And AJ Rose up in the corner. AJ, what have you been doing? What'd you do to keep busy during quarantine? Oh, uh, really? I've just been chilling. You know, I learned trying to learn how to cook. Uh, a lot of just Netflix, chill, play the game a little bit, not too much. What are you watching on Netflix? What do you? Do we have AJ back? What are you? What are you watching on Netflix? I recently, I recently just watched. What was I watching? Something called. Oh, we lost you there for a second. We'll come back to that. Uh, let's go to a question that uh, just came in. This is from Conley. Uh, Conley says, my 10-year-old daughter, Annabelle, wants to know if you guys get nervous before game days. And I'll add to that one somebody asked the other night, Are you, do any of you have any superstitions? So do you get nervous or do you have any superstitions? Uh, let's go to Cavassier first. Um. I would say, yeah, sometimes you get a little butterflies, you feel me? Because um, probably an environment you've never been in, like some stadiums you go in, it'd be real loud, stuff like that, and just be a different apps, different atmosphere than being at home. So that would, that would be the main thing. Just getting Once you get used to it, you're straight. All right, let's go to A.J. Rose. Uh, A.J., do you get nervous, and do you have any superstitions for game day? <laughs> oh, AJ's muted. Got to unmute us, AJ. All right, we'll come back to it. We'll try to come back to AJ. Let me go to uh, Chris Rodriguez. Chris, <laughs> bro, mine's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, I do get nervous a little bit, and uh, I'm kind of superstitious. Like, if I wear one one thing and I play good, I'll probably wear the same thing next week. Okay. Uh, Terry Wilson, what about you? Uh, just kind of the same, like what Smoke said. Uh, you know, just going into like a hostile environment, um, you know, it can get rowdy sometimes. So, 
you know, like if you haven't played in that, that stadium, um, if, you, if you're it's if, if it's your first time playing in you know a new stadium, uh, sometimes I mean you can you can get a little nervous, but you know, probably by like that first snap, it's pretty it's it's gone. You're not nervous anymore. You're just, you're just out there, um, you know, doing what you do. And we'll go to Joy Gatewood next. Muted. Muted. Oh, okay. Joey, unmute us there. <laughs> there we, oh, had it for a second. There we go. <laughs> Shoot, I would really say, you know, I get, I'm, I might get nervous. Maybe the first snap, you know, might, but you know, you know, it's different. It's definitely different. But I mean, usually, you know, usually I just got the music and I'm just on, I'm on, I'm on go mode. What are you listening to, usually? Oh yeah, I listen. I listen to that to that good music. <laughs> All right, AJ Rose. Yeah, you did. Right. What about you? Who was the question again? Do you get, <coughs> excuse me. Do you get nervous before a game, and or do you have any superstitions? Uh, yeah, I get nervous for every game until I get tackled. I, usually after my first tackle, I'm I'm not nervous anymore. Uh, as far as superstitions, I don't, I don't really think I have any. Okay. Uh, let's go uh, back to another question. <laughs> Just came in from Don. And here's one you guys should have fun with. Who is the best dancer on the team? Terry, we'll start with you. Uh, the best dancer? I'm going to say Smoke. Smoke got some moves. Mm. You know, he's always dancing in the locker room, like, every day. So I, I'd have to say Smoke. <laughs> what about it, Cavassier? You voting for yourself? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who got the best moves. I don't dance for real. I don't know what they talking about. <laughs> Man. I was just playing. I, I say me for real, though. Um, a lot of a couple more people dance, like Bully. Not oh. too many of our players like dance. So this is gonna, it's going to be that one person that turned the locker room up. So it's going to be me. So I'm going to turn it up every time. <laughs> AJ, what about you? Yeah, it's smoke definitely got everybody beat. Either him between him and Bully. They're the most two most dancers people on the team. I mean, we lost Day Day, but you know, he probably would have been the best dancer. Um C Rod, anything to add to that? Uh nah. It's really smoke for me. I mean, you catch him pre game, pre practice, he dancing. Joey, do we assume you make it unanimous for Cavassier? Mute it, man. Mute, Mute it. it. Mute it, man. Can't hear you. Mute it. You. <laughs> Mute it, Joe. Uh, oh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> I go with Smoke, though. Yeah. Okay. I'm, like, since, yeah, I see him always jumping around, dancing and stuff like that. The most, at least. So I'll give it to Smoke. All right. Let's go to another question from Tony, uh, who is with us in Lexington, here in Lexington. His question is for Touchdown Terry what would you rather do in a game, Terry? Rush for 150 or pass for 300, assuming that you get the win? Yeah, uh, I'm picking the 300 plus every game. Uh, I mean, I just feel like just being a quarterback, you always want to pick a defensive part, and it's something you take pride in. And I mean, rushing, like rushing, I mean, it's fun and everything, but. When you throw a bomb and you just you pick the defensive part, it don't get no better than that. So I'd have to pick the, the 300 plus. Uh, you, uh, I, I said the other night, uh, I think we had the receivers on. I said the safest bet for your your all's team this season is that it will throw more. Is that right? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy one. <laughs> all right. Uh, next one's from uh, M. Corio. Who's the best hooper on the team? Uh, we'll start with uh, Joey. So I honestly, honestly, I ain't seen nobody hoop, so they gonna have to prove, you know, who the best hooper is. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go up to um, AJ. Uh, best hooper. Hmm. Not to go with. Oh uh, yeah, ain't nobody really proved that, that they could hoop for real, but I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with my boy Q, my boy Q, Quinn Bohanna. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's go to Terry for that one too. Uh, I say when I first got when I first got to Kentucky, you know, we were in the wreck a lot, so um, I got to see Josh Pascal who, 
Uh, I, I'd say Josh Pascal. That man can dunk, shoot, do everything. So I'm going with Josh Pascal. Okay. Um, all right, let's go to Cavassier. Um, like since since I got here freshman year, um, like Terry said, we've been to the Rick a couple of times. So the best people I seen who was, I say Bryce Oliver and Jordan Wright. Cause they hoop. Right, uh, They're some hoopers. Yeah. C-Rod, anything they to add? Uh, yeah, like Smoke said, I ain't really – uh, but I didn't really go to the rec when they was all going, but I did uh, see J-Dub on uh, Hoop Mixtape or something like that. I seen it on uh, on YouTube. I saw him hooping. That's two votes for Jordan Wright. Right. Yeah. So I think maybe between, between there we may have a five-man team to pick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, all right, let's go to the next question. Uh, and uh, this one, you can send these in via Twitter or Facebook, either one. Um, let's go to James. How, how was it trying to train during the offseason, during the, the pandemic? Um, and uh, let's start with Joey. Um, you know, Luckily, back in Florida, I had a um, I had a trainer, so I got to uh, use a facility and just you know just work on mechanics and stuff like that throughout when uh, COVID started happening. So like quarantine, you know, I was inside for a little. Well, I was inside most of the time, but um, you know, I would, I would go throw, go work out, try and make sure you know I stay I stay right. And you know, I mean, it's not hard when you want to do it. Uh, what about uh, C Rod, Chris? Uh, back at home, I mean, when I was home, I really didn't have a real a real trainer or anything like that. But um, you know, my uncle he's played college football. He played at uh, HBCU in Alabama. Uh, so I mean, he took me through a lot of stuff. And then I had a lot of, or not a lot, but I had a couple players from my high school that went and played D one. So we all got together, did some work. Uh, what about Cavassier? Um, it was kind of difficult. Um, where I'm from, like, we ain't got that many gyms. And where I used to work out, I, I work out at my high school. And my high school was closed down, so I had to find ways to just find a way to keep my body right. So I just ran, did a lot of um, agility stuff just to stay football ready. And that was basically it. Terry. Uh, for me, I was here in Lexington, so I was still rehabbing at the time. Uh, so I was just at the facility every day uh, trying to get my legs stronger. Uh, you know, I worked some quarterback drills as well just to you know, get back in shape and getting used to doing those type of things. So, you know, I was in Lexington. AJ, what about you? Uh, I said it was difficult at times, but it was definitely fun. Just trying to use different – different tools around the house or just to get a good lift in. But, you know, like I said, it was rough when the first hit because all the gyms was closed, but we made the most out of it. Okay. Uh, let's go to our next question. This one comes from Macy Morris. How about that? Former Kentucky player. Who's the most unique teammate that you had at UK? Um, we'll start with um, Terry. I'd say the most unique teammate, I'd have to go with Benny Snell. I can see that. <laughs> How about the game he had the other night? Yeah, he went off. Balling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, can see, I think we're going to see more of that. AJ, what about you? Same guy? Most unique? Uh, I'm going with my man Jordan Jones. He was the most unique person that I've ever been around. Okay. Quite a competitor, too. Cavassier. Um, I, I have to say either Benny or JJ J Jones. Okay, because they were uh, yeah, yeah. Chris, yeah. Chris Rodriguez. Yeah, just like what Smoke say, either Benny or J Jones, two different people. I mean, ain't never gonna see nobody else like them. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Joey. I know you're the new guy to the mix here, but anybody that is you you've met since you've been here that's particularly unique. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, all my teammates, you know, my boys, so, yeah, 
you know. Hard to pick one when you have like a I say, I just like you like you said, I just got here, so yeah. I don't really know. I don't know the other the other guys like they said. So uh well um, uh hopefully there'll be a uh bye week somewhere along the way where uh Benny, some of those guys can get back. I know Josh Allen came back uh last year. Let's go to another question for uh, this one's from Lee Stevens. Um wants to know who inspired you to play football? Let's start with Cavassier this time. Um, I would say, like, just growing up where I'm from, like, we, we just played football. All my cousins and my big older brother and stuff like that played. So um, just growing up playing just made me want to play and watching it. Okay. Uh, Chris? Uh, I would have to say my uncle. Uh, when I was living in Georgia, I mean, I wasn't really the type to really go outside. I usually wanted to stay inside and be on my uh, PSP or like PlayStation 2 or whatever. And then he used to like make me come outside and play with them in the yard. So eventually, like, I was bigger than the kid my age around where I live. And then, he, like, I just eventually just started playing. Joey, uh, how about you? Who was your inspiration for football? Anybody in particular? Um, it could be family or a pro player. Uh, uh, no, I don't have, I don't, I don't have no family who. I'm trying to think. You know, I, I mean, I watched Cam. I watched Cam, Tim, yeah. Mike Vick. Um, you know, guys like that. What do you think Cam's going to do with the Patriots? Oh, he's going to ball out for sure, no doubt. Got to go for a good start. AJ, what about you? Uh, I say my big, my older cousin, Hashim Rose. He was, I grew up watching him play, and he played running back, so that made me choose the position I, I play today. Okay. And Terry, I'd say my older cousins. Um, every time we have family gatherings, and I go over there, you know, they had their football pads, you know, like in the closet, and they had pull it out, put it on me. They had helmets, so we'd go out in the front yard and basically do like Oklahoma drill. So. I feel like that just started it off, and then I just wanted to play football after that. For fans that don't know, what is the Oklahoma drill? So basically, you have you have a an offensive, uh, it could be like an offensive center, and then you got a D line guy, and then you got a it could be a safety or a DB you're going against, and you got a, you have a guy with the ball, and you have two pads set up. You can use cones, or you can use just you know pads. And uh, you have to stay inside those pads, and the guys you know, on the defensive side have to beat, you know, the center that's blocking for you. And most of the time, you're going to meet up with whoever you're going against. It could be a DB, like I said. You know, it doesn't matter really. Uh, but you just go head on, and you have to make it through the through the you know collision. Okay. And one other question that came in for Terry from Nate: What's it going to be like to play without the longer hair? <laughs> I mean, it's going to feel good. Um, I, I, I got tired of the hair. Um, it was just getting too long and it was hot. So I feel like I'm going to play more freely. All right. Uh, lastly, Carly, AJ, wanted to just – not a question. She just wanted to thank you and your family for always being nice to her and her family at all the games and having time to stop for a picture. So fans really appreciate that. So nice. Oh, yeah, most definitely. It's all love from us. You know it. Yeah. Nice to hear that from uh, the fans, I'm sure. So I wanted to let you know that before we let you guys go. Appreciate all of you being with us. We've got four more guys coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Best of luck next Saturday in the opener. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. All right. We're going to play a little video here to transition to our next group of Wildcats on the Virtual Fan Day, presented by Clay Ingles. Lexington, Kentucky the home of thoroughbreds, opportunity, and a blue-collar mentality. At the University of Kentucky, anything is possible. It's the people who make it home. Big Blue Nation is roaring. The party has started. Kentucky earning respect with every snap. We specifically tailor what we do, not only to the football athlete, but to each position. We build a foundation in three to four years of training that wherever you go, 
all you're going to do is fine tune the aspects of your training that we've you know brought you through over the course of your career here. Here at Kentucky, we pride ourselves on taking care of the student athlete as a whole. We want to help take care of their bodies and their minds to get them to where they want to be in life. Our program is very individualized in terms of finding a specific plan for each individual athlete so that they can find academic success. We have a 24-7 fueling zone here available to the athletes. It's always fully stocked with fresh foods. If you do the work on the field, our group of communicators, marketing, PR people, video people, photographers, all of us together, we're going to figure out a way to make sure that you become the best player you can be off the field. What we strive to do is just build men of you know, competence, character, and uh, guys who are going to be ready for consequence. Being able to serve a purpose, not just being a football player, it making me more cognizant of my decisions, of anything that I do. You are building a brand that is worth something. Find somebody you can relate to. Find somebody that's speaking life into you. I've seen the vision that, that Coach Stoops had, and I wanted to be a part of that vision. Respect I have for that man as a person, as a coach, and as just a human being. You know, he's just awesome to be around. We look at it as a whole person development. How specifically will you alter your habits to help you overcome deficiencies? The opportunity is yours. On the field, in the community, in the classroom. When people ask why Kentucky, we say, why not? Welcome back into our virtual fan day for UK football presented by Clay Ingalls. I'm Tom Leach for the UK Sports Network, and we have four more Wildcats to join the conversation. You can post your questions to the Kentucky football accounts on Facebook and Twitter. We have some questions that uh, either we didn't get to last night or that came in earlier today as well. So we'll get to some of those as we move through the program. Uh, we're going to bring in uh, tonight Josh Ali, Cleveland Thomas, Bryce Oliver, and Bo Allen, three receivers and a freshman quarterback. Gentlemen, thanks to uh, all of you for joining us, and uh, we'll jump uh, right into the fray here and start taking questions. First one's coming from Mike, and uh, he says, the wide receivers sacrificed a lot last year, did a great job having to uh, do a lot more blocking than pass catching, obviously. Do you see the wide receiver core being leaders in the SEC this year? We'll start with Bryce on this one. <laughs> Uh, for sure, it was definitely um, challenging just knowing uh, day in and day out that we're going to have to block. But uh, it was all better for the team. Um, just knowing, going in every practice um, throughout the week, just um, just sacrificing everything, just knowing that uh, this is for the best of the team and uh, the scheme of the team or the scheme of the week, and just, just, just put our head, put our pride to the side and just went in and did what we had to do. Okay, let's go next to Cleveland Thomas. Oh, uh, such on uh, Bryce. Uh, it was kind of tough you know, week to week, but uh, we banded together, did the best for the team, and uh, I honestly can say this: this this time around, you know, Terry back, we got some other quarterbacks in there. We throwing the ball a lot more, and I see our receiving to be a lot better this this coming season. And uh, for the final question on this receiver group, on this question. We'll go to the guy who caught the uh, most famous pass from last season uh, you know, at the Belt Bowl. Josh, what do you think about this season? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's going to be great. Uh, we've been working really hard. You know, uh, you know, I, I think now that, you know, we blocked all last season, you know, that's not going to be a problem this year for us to block. But, uh, you know, we, we've we been working hard trying to get the ball in the air. You know, uh, we've been doing a good job this camp. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what happens. All right, let's go to our next question. This one comes from Casey. And uh, wants to know, wants us to get your guys' feelings on the big dog, Vince Barrow. We'll start with uh, the rookie QB there, Bo Allen. What about it, Bo? So Coach Morrow is one of the greatest guys I've probably ever met. He's always puts a smile on your face. He's always joking around and just having a good time with you whenever you're out there or whenever you're with him. Uh, let's go to uh, Bryce. 
Uh, just to pick out, piggyback off both, uh, Meryl's always uh, putting a smile on somebody's face. And he's definitely, uh, he's by far the most blunt coach I've ever met. Uh, gonna give it to you clear cut and raw. Not gonna lie to you, and that's why I love about Merrill. Uh, what about Josh? Uh, Coach Merrill, you know, that's somebody you want to have on your team. You know, he has a lot of connections uh, with the next level, and a lot of coaches. And you know, uh, you know, he just keeps it real with you. You know, he doesn't lie. Like Bryce said, he's real blunt, and uh, you know, he brings that energy every practice. And let's go to Cleveland. Oh. Uh, Coach Moore for me has been, uh, I have a piggyback on what everybody else said, just, you know, coach that I can talk to who always, you know, when I'm in my in my moves or anything, in a bad mood, he always come to me, always pick my head up. You know, he's a good coach to have. Okay. Let's go to our next question. Again, you can send these in via Facebook or Twitter, Kentucky Football Accounts. Um, this sure. one's, which, which receiver – uh, has the best hands, um, Josh. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm gonna say me. Of course, you know, uh, you know, we we got like a little chart going, but um, but I'm gonna say me. Of course, you know, well, be confident in yourself. That fourth down catch in the in the belt bowl, you you can you can make that claim. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bryce, what about you? You had a pretty uh, spectacular catch there early last year, I recall. Uh, I mean. That ain't, that's not nothing. Of course, if you, that's like a question. He, of course, he's gonna say he has the best hands. Like, come on now, like you better just ask the DBs who has the best hands. Out, out of, out of, ah. That's all you gotta say. Uh oh, uh, Cleavon, uh, you had a big catch from Lynn Bowden. I think maybe his first touchdown pass in that Arkansas game. Yes. Uh, so that, I, that took a pretty good set of hands. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I made the toughest catches. That's what I like to see. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like that one right there. They probably got the best hands, but I make the toughest catches. <laughs> All right. Uh, our next question is going to Bo Allen. This one's from Sheldon. Bo, how fast are you learning the playbook and the speed of the game at the SEC level? I feel like I'm going pretty well with it. I mean, it's definitely tough, and the playbook stuff itself and the speed of the game is definitely picked up. But it's definitely a big change. But I feel like I'm getting better every day going with the playbook and going on to change its pace. Your dad help you? Your dad played here, Bill Allen. I can hear yeah. Uh, but we don't – I guess he, he, he helps me out. Like, whenever I was back home and we, when we weren't at campus, we always did a bunch of stuff together. But, yeah, he, he's helped me out a lot. Okay. Let's go to another question. This was from Jarrett. Who's the one guy that keeps this team together? Uh, is there one guy? Uh, Bryce, any thoughts? Uh, the one guy that keeps the team together. Uh, I'm just going to have to go with the quarterback, uh, Terry. Um, just because his charisma, leadership, but it's like it's like it's multiple people that actually keep the team together. He like you have uh, different parts of the team, different pieces of the team. Carries like the more charismatic one. Then we have AD, like he's the funny one. He's gonna give it. He's gonna like, make a laugh at a situation that's really not supposed to be laughed at. But I like, guess it's just different pieces of the, pieces of the team that actually hold the team together. Okay, Josh, what about you? Uh, I would say. Uh, like the big face of the team is uh, Josh Pascal. You know, uh, he's a big leader, you know, to everybody. You know, uh, when you see Josh Pascal, you, you just, you know, you expect a, a leader. And, you know, he uh, he's, he do everything for the team, you know, like media-wise and going out and doing stuff with like uh, talking for the SEC and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I just feel like he's like one of the faces of our program. Cleon? Um. I would say I like Drake, Drake Jackson. Um, he, he, I mean, I, of course I can, Josh is also one and Terry, but Drake is another one, uh, Landon, yeah. I see. And uh, like like Bryce said, there's a lot of different guys in different parts of the team. I mean, it's not just one guy, not one guy holds the team together. Everybody plays their part and most, most uh the team together well. And I would imagine it's because um, you guys have – so much experience and so many older guys on this team. Let's go to one of the freshmen for a perspective on this bow. Yeah, I, all those guys they listed from Josh, Terry, Landon, Drake, and uh, but I've always seen Cedric Dort. He's also been a pretty good leader that I've seen. That I've learned this from the not, stuff in the off season stuff. Now he's led the DBs a lot. He's done that in a really great way. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. 
Uh, next question comes from uh, Stephen. Wants to know your favorite UK, you, <coughs> excuse me, your favorite UK uniform combo. You guys have a lot of different looks. Uh, Josh, we'll start with you. Uh, I got two. I like the uh, the all blue helmets with the all with with the white tops, white bottoms, and my second is uh probably the all blue, all blue helmets, all blue jerseys. You know, just blue all the way down. Okay, Cleveland. What's your favorite look? The all white with the chrome. Yeah, oh. All white with the chrome. The chrome is it just them helmets are amazing. Then the all white, you know, I look like you know Snow White. The, you know, I got a white glove. <laughs> I, like, I like that. I like that. that. That's my favorite. Look good in the Citrus Bowl. <laughs> Bryce, what about you? Definitely the uh, all blue helmets, uh, blue helmet, blue face mask, and then all the white. Uh, white jersey, white pants. Definitely, that's my favorite combo. And finally, Bo, you uh, have seen them. You haven't yeah, I've, won the game yet, but uh, what do you, from what you've seen, what do you like best? I probably like the ones you wore in the bowl game, the belt bowl this past year with those helmets and the all-white jerseys. I like those the best. Okay. Next question is about nicknames from Bucky. Who has the best nickname? Um, <laughs> back to for this one. Oh, shoot. Um, I don't know. I can't. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, you might come back to me for a second. Well, if if you come up with one you want to add in, just holler. Let's yeah. go to Josh. I'm trying to think. I right, know um, the best one. Uh, dang. We got a lot. I don't know. <laughs> We got a lot, you know. Everybody just everybody get called a different name. Oh, oh. yeah. I don't. I'm not. I would. I would say the because we haven't named him yet, but he came in with this nickname, uh, Mike Jenner. He want everybody to call him Donut, which is crazy. But like, I sometimes I have myself calling him Donut, but I try to, you know, I try to just call him by Mike until I I get a name for him. So but that's <laughs> Donut. That's. Uh, Crazy. So it's got to be something where the guys can't pick their own nickname. You you guys have to pick it for them. Yeah, we got to pick it for them. They can't come in with the nickname. But he came in with that name, and it's just crazy to be that he want people to call him Donut. Cleavon, Cleavon, you seem to be agreeing with the uh, nickname can't be can't be brought with you. Uh, I feel like Ernest, but it's, we call him Ernie. That was a nickname that I think Darren Edmond gave Ernest. And I call him Ernie now. So Ernie is a nickname for Ernest. That's that's my okay. nickname. Bryce. Uh there's so many like people with nicknames. Uh my my favorite person with a it's not really a nickname, it's like an inside, it's not really an insider, but the Marcus has the best nickname. His name, <laughs> his nickname is his nickname is just D, like the letter D. <laughs> but it's just funny, like <laughs> Y'all wouldn't understand it because y'all don't like y'all not in the locker room and stuff like that, but that's definitely like <laughs> understand. All right. Uh we'll move on to the next question from Sheldon. Uh wants you guys to uh, rate Darian Kennard. Uh nobody has to go up against him among this group we're talking about, but you get to watch him in action on your side of the ball. Uh, we'll go back to Bryce to start. <laughs> He's definitely uh, one of the fastest um, O linemen I've seen since I've like been playing college football. Or just watching it, uh, I have a specific play. I think it was on the bowl game. I was called like a tunnel screen, and Dan, you see Dan just running out in front. Like I'm like, bro, like you're that big, you should not be moving that fast. So he's definitely high graded, like in my book. Like he won the best in the country, definitely. Let's go to the guy who'll uh, be protected by him, Bo Allen. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what scale we're talking about, but I'd say he's as high as a tackle in college football can get. All, all that I've got to see from him, he's as best as it gets. And even when I was just watching him, like in the past years, he's been fun to watch. And nobody, nobody's much better. Nobody's really better than him at all in college football right now. Let's try to get a couple more questions in. Um, you can send these in via Facebook or via Twitter. This one's from Jeremy. Appreciate all the questions, by the way. They keep coming in one after the other. Who's been the freshman that has uh, turned heads in camp? We'll go back to the freshman, Bo Allen. You can say yourself if you want to. But <laughs> um, It goes back to Josh talking about his nickname. I know Donut Drennan or Mike Drennan, he's, he's been doing really well. 
And uh, last one, what about you? Um, I like I like Vito at safety. Um, Joe Joe's been doing good. Bo, of course, you know he's been ripping it. Um, you know we got a lot of good freshmen, but who really like because I've been I've been throwing with Bo since the summer, so I always and the spring, so I knew he was gonna come in and be cool, but. Uh, who really like turned my head of those, those two safety, uh, Vito and Joe. Uh, Clevon, anybody stand out to you in the freshman group? I have a question. Okay. The, the number 23 running back, is he a freshman? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. In my, like, I, I, yeah, I, I, I honestly don't, I don't even know. His, that's, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, oh, you don't need, oh, my God. Yeah, that's Juton McClain. Juton, yes. No, no, no. That, and, and so, he, so he caught my eye. Like, he, he can't He's, uh, a little spark, and now he on um, mostly every special team. He has the whole, like, yeah, Juton. He got my pick, Juton. He's the one that uh, keeps popping up from Coach Grant, it seems like, in the media session. Yeah. Bryce, anybody to add to the list? Uh, pick it back up, Josh. Them two safeties, Joel and Vito. Um, uh, yeah, Vito is a ball hawk. Joe, Joel kind of hits hard, like for a freshman. Like, I mean, he never hit me hard, but I'm just saying, like, from <laughs> from watching, but. He hit hard, and uh, Vito's like a ball hog. He always, always is around the ball. And Juton, like, for his size, he definitely runs behind his pad, so I like that about him. And uh, kudos to you, Bo. You're having a great camp, sir. Okay, let's go to Tony, one of the questions that came in earlier. Do you guys miss the interaction with the fans, and do you think it will affect the energy at the games this season, either home or on the road? Um, let's uh, go to Josh for this one. Oh, man, of course, you know, the fans is, you know, that, that's the the big reason that we on the field. And, you know, just to, uh, just to not hear that that roar and that and the, uh, go big blue, you know, we can't hear that no more. So it's going to be tough. But, I mean, we know that everybody watching from home, so I think we'll be fine. Thank you. All right. Let's go to uh, another question. Got uh, a few minutes left here to keep these going. Um let me punch this up on the screen here. Get the next one. This one's from uh, Tyler. What's it like, uh, kind of piggybacking on the last question, when the place is full, Kroger Field, and the fans are rocking the place? What What is that like for you guys, Cleavon? Man, that's amazing, man. I remember, I know when full quarter happens, it's a guy. He's, he, when I first got here, he uh, I think he's in Arnhem now. So he just do it like over via screen. When I first got here, he used to come out. And he'll get on the mic, and then just to see the crowd interact, uh, it's just it's an amazing feeling. And then I I was just blessed with seeing when we played Florida, and that it was rocking, man. It was it was rocking. I'm talking about from start to finish, the crowd was just so into it. And this year, I'm gonna, obviously, I'm gonna miss it. I'm missing a lot. So, Josh, what about you? Um. Wait, what was the question again? Just Kroger Field when it was full. It won't be this year, but when it was full, what was that experience like? Uh, uh, it's, um, it's unexplainable, man. You know, you just – you could feel everybody, like, in your body. You know, like, when you make big plays and the roars and stuff, you know, you could feel that. And that makes you, you know, want to just do more. So, you know, we're going to miss them. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's the best best stadium I, I've been in, really, in this pack. For sure. Bryce? Uh, for sure, the just the loud roars, you know what I'm saying? Especially like when we first come out the tunnel, that's like the big it factor for me about the whole the pack stadium. Especially when we come when it's like a night game and we come out in the, in the flashing lights. Definitely that I'm gonna miss, and then just hearing everybody. And you always have those one or two fans like right behind the sideline, just knows everybody's name for some reason, just talk, trying to talk, have a conversation with us during the game. So that's what I'm going to miss, too. <laughs> Let's go to a question from Mike. And uh, what made you commit to Kentucky? We'll start with you, Bo. For me, it was the relationships I just developed over the time with the coaches. Like I, I've always been a Kentucky fan. Kentucky's always been my favorite school I've always wanted to go to. But you're talking with Coach Grant, Coach Henshaw, Coach Steve, they've always they sealed it for me for sure. Price, uh, piggybacking off Bo, just the relationships I uh, I had with Coach Grant, uh, and then the wide receiver coach I was being recruited by at that time, uh, Coach Lamar Thomas. Uh, usually, like most of the part was was, was Grant, uh, just 
interactions we had throughout my high school career. A lot of things uh, inspired uh, when I was going through high school, like my, throughout my senior year. I had an injury, and then Grant was just right there saying that he was still going to recruit me while a lot of schools kind of backed off, you know what I'm saying? So that really, like, saved the day right there. Uh, let's go to Cleveland. Uh, Pick back off Bryce, Coach Grant and Coach LT coming down to Florida, you know what I'm saying? You know, just the interactions, you know. And another thing was, you know, in Miami, we only get really real, real hot, hot or storm. But we don't get no real, real good fall. So I came up on a visit, you know, saw fall, saw the leaves, you know, different color leaves. You know, Kentucky had a show, and I just fell in love with the scenery. You know, it was a, I don't know, I came on a, I think it was during the summer. It was nice, nice little, probably 75. Oh. And I, you know, I just fell in love. And I got to saw, I went to Kingland, saw the horses and everything. So I just, I just like visiting. Okay. And uh, Josh. Uh, the relationships, of course, but um, something that, that really got me was the guys that was here, like, before, like, my freshman year, and, uh, you know, just on the visits, hanging out with those guys and talking to them, and, uh, you know, they, they kept it 100 with me, and they told me what to expect, and, you know, uh, that's just a challenge that I was willing to take, and, um, you know, I stuck through it, and, you know, it's been great so far. Okay, let's go to uh, another question here. Facebook and Twitter is where you can send these. It's the Virtual Fan Day presented by Clay Ingalls here at UKAthletics.com. Uh, from Ruben, describe how you think the first touchdown will be scored this year and who do you think will score it? Josh, you mm -hmm. scored the last touchdown of last season. Yeah. No, you didn't. Jordan Wright did. Yeah, Jordan did, yeah. Um, that's tough. I don't know. You know, it's uh... – I would, I would like to score the first touchdown, you know, something, a long route, something like that. But, I mean, you never know. We, we got a lot of guys that's that's going to open up, that's going to, uh, you know, spring some big plays. So, I mean, it's just something we got to wait and see. I, I can't even say it. We got, well, a lot in, we got a lot in the bag right now. Well, if you, if you do get it, uh, it can, you can have scored the last offensive touchdown from last yeah. season <laughs> and for this season. So, we'll make this work one way or the other. Cleavon, who, what about you? Any thoughts? Uh. I don't, I I I, I want to say me scoring the first touchdown, it'll be a blessing. But I honestly seeing us punching in on the run. I I, I really honestly feel that man. Our you know, our run has always been unstoppable, and you know our blocking is phenomenal. Uh, second uh, from receiver to O line, so I feel like one of the running backs gonna punch it in for us. Okay. Um, let's see, we have time for one or two more. Let's see if we can. Um, let's let's get let's wrap it up with this about fan day experiences from the past. Um, you know anything that funny memories, good stories, <clears throat> and I'll actually start with Bo on this. You haven't been through them, but I'm guessing maybe did you come to any as you were growing up? I know I went to a couple when I was like at elementary school, or right around there. I know I know for sure I did, but um, probably been a little bit since then. But I remember. Probably like around the Andre Woodson days. I know I went to a couple right around then. Okay. Naturally, you'd be in the quarterback line. <laughs> Josh, what about you? Uh, okay. The funniest thing I've seen, I don't want to say it because it's kind of, but so, <laughs> somebody came, somebody came, uh, it was a girl came through the line and she was a big Blake Bone fan. And she had on the shirt. I can't say what it said on the shirt, but it was the funniest thing ever. The funniest <laughs> by far what I've seen. Okay. The funniest. <laughs> we'll save that for the uh, after hours edition yeah. of Virtual Fan Day. <laughs> Bryce, go ahead. Uh, honestly, I haven't had like a like a specific moment that like stands down on Fan Day. Probably. What did you enjoy about it? I mean, like, just, um, interacting with the fans, you can say that. Yeah. But we've been sitting down too long. I haven't hurt my knees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cleva? Okay. Um, uh, what I really liked over the years was, you know, I'm, I just became, you know, you know, receiver, like a big receiver, I mean, anything or more known receiver. So just seeing the fans knowing my name, like, you know, I do my signature, but 
the fans that come out, like, yeah, Cleveland Thomas, you know, I don't really, I haven't really done anything. So for a fan to come by and know my name, it always puts a smile on my face and just, you know, I just gotta put on, come, come a little harder so I can get some old fans to know my name, you know, by, as year goes by. That is a good way to close out the evening. Thank you guys for doing this. Um, I know the fans are uh, enjoying having a chance to interact with you guys since they can't do it in person. So hopefully uh, next uh, this time next year you will have already done this and gotten to meet a lot of new Wildcat fans. But for now, we'll wish you good luck a week from Saturday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, thanks uh, to all of our participants tonight that sent in questions on Facebook or on Twitter. We have one more session coming up tomorrow night for the Virtual Fan Day presented by Clay Ingalls. It's at 8 Eastern time, same time. So, And you can go ahead and send in questions uh, via the Kentucky Football Facebook or Twitter accounts. And if you can't be with us tomorrow, you can always watch it later, and uh, you can see if your question made it on. So send those in, and we'll see you tomorrow at 8 Eastern for the Virtual Fan Day presented by Clay Ingalls.